Boxing is something I love. Just, I do it every day anyway. I train every day. I'm, I'm with boxers all the time. But when you um, dissect their lives as in the real world, not in the gym, not in the ring in front of thousands of people, um, it's a very sensitive world because boxers are individuals that don't have to go to college. You don't even have to graduate from high school to be the best fighter. If you're good with your hands, you got the skills, you do have to be smart, but it's a different type of smart. And uh, I find them to be the most vulnerable athletes of all. It's important to tell a story about an athlete who has to learn how to become a father. Um, not your typical story uh, of a fighter because he starts off on top and falls. Um, but most importantly, it's, it's about learning to be a father. That's why I wanted to make them. Billy and, and Maureen, two orphans who found their way, they, they got what, what you think is the American dream, you know? And they still love being with each other. They, they were still best friends. Um, again, she allowed him to be the great Billy Hope. Um, he allowed her to be the, the mom with the, the Range Rover and taking the daughter to school and live in a big mansion and have uh, nannies and all this kind of stuff. They needed each other because they were like two lost children who found their fantasy, so to speak, you know. I said, Jake, you have to train like a fighter. I, c I can't have you faking it. You have to be in the gym twice a day, every day, even on Sundays. And when we travel, Terry's coming with us, the coach, and he's going to train you when we travel, whether it's New York, Vegas, here, wherever. And he did that. I know how hard it is to train like a fighter. And, and I really do truly love Jake. He's a good friend, and he's a good guy. And, I, and I, I didn't want to ask him to do something that hard that I couldn't do myself still right now at my age that I could still do. So I told Jake, I'll do it with you. We'll crank up the music, man, and we're gonna go on this journey together from beginning to the end, right? From every sweat to I finally say that's a wrap. And I wanted to keep my word to Jake for that because I knew that if he sees me in there and we keep each other going, we were able to talk about the story and the character and, and I would see things in him um, that I knew I would be able to use in the film because there were questions about, you know, because I haven't seen Jake do this, but I knew it was in him because I met him years ago and I said, man, you have to do tougher things. There's something in you. And as we train together and I watch him starting to hit the bag and work with Terry, I said, he got a lot of anger. Jake has a lot in him, you know? And he's a sweet human being, but it's something inside of him. And I needed to see it myself up close. So I knew the more we were trained together, not only would he get in shape and understand the world of fighting and boxing and sacrifice, that I as a director would see things just because he was becoming Billy Hope. That guy really goes to another place, you know, so he gives his heart, which is all you can ask for, you know? And he's, and he's skilled. He has the skill. He's been doing it since he was a little kid. So he has that. Now it's just, he just gives his heart and the skills just, it's a natural for him, like a fighter. Rachel came in and she met with me and we talked in her wardrobe and she goes, well, can I come train? And we were all kind of like, yeah. Okay, 6 a.m. the next morning, she was in there every day because she wanted to understand what it felt like, what it smelled like, and she wanted to make sure she knew what she was saying to him. She understood it when she's saying, you're taking too many punches before you get off. You know, she actually understood that because she was around it so much. I needed somebody that was, one, um, spiritual, powerful, um, intense, uh, uh, elegant in his own way, but raw. And Forrest Whitaker was like the guy. I mean, he's just the guy, you know? He brings such spirit and power to the role without trying. We, we have talked here and there, uh, me and 50, about doing something together, and I couldn't figure out the right thing to do with him because I liked him so much. He's a nice man. And, uh, and I was watching him get into the boxing game as a promoter. And he was with Mayweather a lot. They were hanging. And when I read Jordan again, I said, I need Jordan to be authentic as well. I need Jordan to 
be a guy that's in the gray. He's not a bad guy. He's a businessman. I said, that's 50. I can't say enough about Una. Uh, Una is so special in every way. I mean, you are any actor. You're fighting for your life on the screen with that girl, man. That little girl is special. Uh, when we were casting for the kids in New York, um, and Jake, I had Jake come down with me, um, all the kids came in and were great. They were great kids. And uh, at some point I said, okay, today when the kids come, I need you to just go into the character. When they walk through that door, just be dad. And I'm just going to go in the corner and I'm just going to watch. And some of them came in and they're, they're, they kind of got thrown off, but then they caught on. Literally, Una came in and Jake went into his character and she was ahead of him sometime. She already had her dolls laid out on the floor and she starts, and he said to one of her, he goes, well, what's their names? And she instantly started telling them everybody's name with a British accent. And it was amazing. And when she left, uh, I remember me and Jake at the end of all the session, she goes, Antoine, I, you have to cast her. I said, I know. He goes, if you don't cast her, we can't do the movie. I think because of my love for fighting, for fighters, for what they do, um, the goal was to make them proud of it. The goal is to make boxers, and my friends who are fighters have seen it, and they're like, man, you pulled it off. I, I, forgot, I forgot I was watching the movie for a minute. So when they say that to me, when Lampley says that to me, when Lampley watches it and gets emotional, I've done my job.